give me three things that CBC has done because we had we had Byron Allen on last week and we were talking to him just before you got in about the um, Civil Rights Act of 1866 and he was saying that you know um, uh, the Amicus uh, brief uh, Kamala Harris signed it yes. and a few others but only eight of the 44 members of the CBC actually joined 50, 54, 54 54 I'm sorry 54 55 members, members of the CBC 55 <laughs> only eight though have joined in right. um, and I don't know why more haven't are you among them? Well, I will tell you what is happening is it's a dialogue and conversation that is starting to happen. Generally, what happens first is the committees that you sit on because that's something that becomes first in your mind. So those individuals that are on the Energy and Commerce Committee, of which this issue is directly in front of, they have primary function and understanding of what's taking place. For example, I serve on the Financial Services Committee. So you were talking about black banks. I'm focused on MDIs, Minority Depository Institutions. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, you know, well, I'm slow working down, on- Slow down, Congressman. <laughs> minority- Depository Institutions uh, that have been shrinking. And I'm focused because I serve on the Financial Services Committee along with Maxine Waters, who's chair of that committee. We focus on that. And then we look at the individuals who might be on these other committees, and then they come back when we have our weekly meetings, and then we have that kind of conversation and dialogue so that we can then determine what issues that we get on, on a collective way. Right. Certain issues might be more local in, in, in nature because of the, the, the individual district or part regionally, geographically, that a member may come from. But the dialogue and conversation that is taking place now You'll see some that may jump on, more members, where it may not be something that the caucus as a whole, because of the differences of positions that members may have based upon the districts that, of which they represent. So if, so, I'm, if, I'm, well, if I'm listening to this, because Dr. Carr just mentioned this, if the Supreme Court, which is here in this case uh, this week, and they'll, it'll probably take them a couple of months to rule, if the Supreme Court determines that Byron Allen or this particular case is not worthy and they rule against him, that throws into the balance all of our civil rights, not just his, not just, you know, his case actually encompasses. So why wouldn't everybody be on board well, with that? As I said, from the individuals that I've talked to thus far, because listening to, I mean, my wife called me up when she saw certain things going on the internet mm -hmm. and says, hey, what do you know about this? Truth of the matter is, it had not been something that had been the central topic of conversation at our Congressional Black Caucus meetings. So then what that spurred me to do by what is taking place is to call my colleagues that are on the uh, Commerce Committee, and I'm having dialogue and conversation with them when we get back. This took place last week. So we've got, for example, uh, G.K. Butterfield from North Carolina, Bobby Rush from Chicago, Yvette Clark from New York. So my job now is I'm going to talk to them so I can find out more in depth of what is at stake. From what I understand thus far, you know, that there was so, because I know with some of the uh, some lower f uh, federal courts that had made rulings, some that ruled against them, et cetera, uh, the NAACP and others, you know, had taken various positions. So now uh, I am in a study mode. So I'm not mm -hmm. in there because I was not initially a part of it. I'm in a study mode. And then we'll have a general dialogue and conversation so that I can determine first whether I, Gregory Meeks, as an individual mm -hmm. member of Congress, feel that I should sign on this brief. And then depending upon how many other CBC members uh, then turn, you know, jump on onto it. What happens, I'll be quite honest with you also, when you have 55 members, it is tremendously different also than when you've had, when we had nine. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, then is more, you know, when you talk about diversity, there's diversity and, and no one becomes monolithic. And then therefore you have individuals from different districts and they need to do different things to get elected for the collective good. And we try to figure that out. This very well may turn out to be something that is a caucus issue. I don't know yet. But I know that it's something that is now starting to percolate and people are starting to have a conversation about. Give me a couple well, of caucus issues. Well, a couple of caucus, caucus issues right now, of course, is, is health care. I hit something wrong. All right. <laughs> Still, health care and delivery of health care is because you don't do anything and, and, you know, you can't do anything without health care. And what has happened, it was a primary focus of ours working at the time with then President Barack Obama to make sure that we got 
health care across the line. And we did get it across the line, and now it's being rolled back. So therefore, as a result, we've got to refocus on it because too many of our folks uh, are not receiving or are losing the health care coverage that we were creating and hopeful to improve under the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. Mm -hmm. So that becomes a primary, you know, as far as also what is, uh, you know, front and center on our mind is trying to make sure that we create financial literacy and wealth building within our communities. We lost, as a result of the 2008 financial crises, we lost more wealth than we had over almost over a generation. And so we are focused on making sure that we're doing the kinds of things to, to regain that wealth How? and to prevent, uh, well, for example, when we came to forward, we had passed um, uh, legislation after 2008 that actually created the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to try to protect consumers, mm -hmm. to try to make sure that individuals that were trying to rip off our community further, like that took place in 2008, that we could wipe them out and create a better institution so that we could make sure that we know that when we're investing money, where we're investing it, and that we're doing it in a wise way. So we are now, unfortunately, with the Trump administration and what they're doing, they are trying to push back some of those gains. So we'll put in a defensive position that to try to stop the, the the losses that we've had so that we can then get in a offensive position once we again retain or regain, that's why elections are important, mm -hmm. uh, in the presidency. But also what what is happening now is because we are in positions, when you talk about 55 members and that we're in um, the majority in the House, we now chair these committees. So we're setting and laying the foundation I'll talk about financial services particularly because I'm sitting on that. But Bobby Scott from uh, from Virginia, he's doing the same thing with education, education. as chair of the Education Committee. Um, Benny Thompson is doing the same thing on the uh, Homeland Security and making sure that we're making sure that that's diverse and people that's getting some of those contracts also look like us. Mm -hmm. That makes a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have Eddie Bernice Johnson, who is uh, the chair of science and technology. Uh, so that we can make sure that we're looking at that and we're inclusive therein mm -hmm. uh, in that regards. And these are full committee chairs. This is historic in nature. Uh, and so once now we've passed uh, several bills, the, the difficulty is we don't have the majority in the Senate. So the Senate then does not pass the bills that we passed in the House. And that's why these elections and that we're talking about becomes important because once we move that, then we can be able to push some of the bills that we've passed in the House over on the Senate side, and then, of course, you've got to get a president that'd be willing to sign them. But we are laying those foundations as we speak.